So we've already seen that conductors contain charge carriers, generally electrons, which are free to move. So let's now consider if we had a neutral metal sphere and we were going to charge it up. Well, when we place one charge onto that metal sphere, then there is only the one charge, so it's not in the field of the electric field of any other charges, so it doesn't feel a force, so it can go anywhere. But let's now imagine that we place two charges onto our metal sphere. In this case, there's a repulsive force between those two charges, so they're going to move as far apart as they can. So they will move to the outside of the sphere on opposite sides. Now, if we place a third charge, there's now repulsive electric forces between all three charges. So again, they try and get as far apart from each other as they possibly can. So they distribute themselves evenly over the outside surface of that sphere. And the same thing happens if we add a fourth, fifth, sixth charge, etc. So let's imagine that we've now got a fair number of charges on our metal sphere. And let's consider what happens to the charge carriers inside that metal sphere. So if there is an electric field, the charge carriers inside the metal sphere are going to feel a force and they're going to move under the influence of that force. So this tells us that there actually has to be no electric field inside the sphere, because if there was an electric field inside that metal sphere, then the charge carriers are going to move and they're going to keep moving until that electric field has been canceled out. So there is no electric field inside a conductor. So let's now imagine taking our neutral metal sphere, so we've discharged it now, and we're going to place it into an external constant electric field like seen here. Now if we think about the charge carriers inside that metal sphere, they're going to feel a force due to that external electric field. And as a result, they're going to move under the influence of that field. So we'll have the positive charges moving in the same direction as the electric field and the negative charges moving in the opposite direction. So this creates, the movement of these charges, creates an electric field inside that metal sphere which opposes that applied electric field. So these charges inside the sphere are going to keep moving until that electric field is completely cancelled out at which point the charge carriers inside the sphere no longer feel a force. So the important point is that charge carriers in a conductor move to the surface and cancel out any external electric fields. So the electric field inside a conductor is always zero. Now, of course, physics is an experimental science, so you shouldn't take my word for this being how conductors behave. So what we've got here is a demonstration to prove to you that this is what's going on. So here I've got a Van de Graaff generator. As we've discussed previously, when I turn it on, I'll get a positive charge on this metal ball up the top. Now, what I'm going to do is place two cups filled with polystyrene beady things on top of the Van de Graaff generator and turn it on. One of these cups or cans is made of metal, which is a good conductor, and the other made of polystyrene, which is a non-conductor. Now, before I place them on top here and turn it on, so they'll go on top like this, I want you to make a prediction about what you think is going to happen when I turn the Van de Graaff generator on.